Hello friends, and welcome to my art therapy videos. If you found this channel, you're probably wondering, what is art therapy? And that is an excellent question, my friend. Um, art therapy, what it is, tends to be dependent on what population it's being worked with and what the goal is. So if you think that art therapy is just making some beautiful paintings like these, owning some expensive brushes and some expensive fixative and that only an artist can do art therapy. That's not correct at all. Uh, anyone, anyone can do art therapy. Um, art therapy, you can even change the materials so that babies, infants in hospitals can do it. Uh, they can do finger painting with like little pudding. It doesn't have to look beautiful. It doesn't have to be anything in particular. Um, you just have to get something out in the visual format. Um, art therapy could be for anyone. Um, the reason that we use art therapy is just that all of our thinking, not all of it's done in monologues in our head. A lot of times, you know, if we're asked a question, we just don't know why we're feeling the way that we're feeling. But if you ask us to draw something, for example, we can think visually. Some people think in colors. Well, if I use a lot of blues and a lot of sad, because you know I'm sad. Um, if you're doing a lot of energetic lines, it's because you're really excited. Um, but you know, there's even more possibilities than that. Sometimes there is no outcome that we need to show. Sometimes just doing something with our hands can have a very therapeutic effect on our anxiety. It can be very relaxing. Sorry for that pause, and if you hear any sounds, my heater is currently on, so I'll try and pause that and keep it quiet if it's acting up too much. Okay, but back to the video. So I'll show you a bunch of different examples of what art therapy can be. Uh, we'll start with these ones over here. So here I just drew um, how I was feeling uh, about a dynamic between two different people um, and how each one of them feels what they would say. Over here we have some collage. It's showing the evolution of a relationship and that's real fingers crossed kind of feeling. Um, and up here I drew my portrait in past, present, and future. Um, it really gets you thinking about what you want for the future, who you are in the present. And I actually did what's called bilateral drawing. So I switched between my dominant hand and my non-dominant hand. And sort of like um, other sort of bilateral techniques, such as touching the shoulders or moving the eyes back and forth, it involves both sides of your brain. Um, so like a lot of especially traumatic things, they're not kept on the side of the brain where we think and we verbalize in a rational manner. The rational thinking side tends to be a bit quieter when uh, a trauma happens and it's stored in this sort of raw emotion state. You're scared, but you're not quite sure what you're scared of because you don't want to think about what scares you because it's scary. Um, or this excess energy. So sometimes clients come in and before they can even start a drawing, they just need to grab some like Play-Doh like this and they need to throw it. They need to make a ball and they need to smash it. They need to get that energy out. Sometimes it's as simple as taking wet clay and just rubbing your hand on it um, and feeling that sensation. You know, if people are up in their head a lot, you know, thinking and talking, it might keep them up in their head. They need something very physical. So clay works for that. We have some ceramic pieces. Ceramic is great for that kind of thing. Um, the outcome, you don't always have an outcome in mind. You're just learning how to move the clay and you're very focused on it. I also have over here some kinetic sand. I have some molds here that I use and I make some molds in the sand. Um, that's all I can do with it at the moment. There is a type of art therapy called sand tray art therapy, where the whole session you keep your hands in the sand and you use different characters in it. It's a very symbolic thing because 
you know, it's projection. You're not talking about yourself, but you are projecting onto how these characters act towards each other. You can really show a boundary when sometimes boundaries can be quite difficult to talk about. Um, my sister made this ceramic piece for me. Um, it's based off a uh, Dia de los Muertos uh, skulls, and it has a lot of meaning in the color that she chose. Um, every November, I like to make sugar skulls myself. This is a new package and decorate it. Um, it goes into whole mask making, which I think is a very useful type of uh, activity. It's hands-on, like I was saying, with that ceramics, with that textile, with that sand. Um, but it can also show a boundary, who you are on the outside, who you are on the inside. Um, there's other physical things you can do here. I used a cereal box, and I sort of went into um, a little bit of eating disorder theory and feeling, and I showed some feelings by what I chose to put onto the box. And I also made a little anger monster. Well, this is a fear monster. You can do an anger monster, too. And um, these are what I'm afraid of. And then I have these bags in my backpack of like pebbles and uh, pasta, dried pasta, bird seed. And when I feed into this thing, I could actually, I have to physically feed it. And I have to see, you know, wow, maybe I am blowing something out of control. That's not exactly what we want. But I mean, you become more aware of the things that you're doing. Um, you can make different types of puppets. Sock puppets is a sock puppet my grandmother made. Um, can use jewelry, seashell to uh, this remember someone who's passed. So art therapy can use definitely in the grieving process. Um, these are little Christmas ornaments I made in school. Again, you know, it doesn't have to be too expressive, just the act of doing something. And these are a great relaxing way to celebrate the Christmas season. Um, some people, this is a bag of worry dolls, um, they're little yarn dolls, and when you have something that scares you or stresses you out, you whisper it into the bag and it takes it away while you're sleeping. Um, for some people, it is helpful to draw in a more formal arts kind of way, like someone may bring some flowers um, into an inpatient ward and you have to focus on it and draw it. And if some people have been impatient for a long time, they might not have seen real flowers in a while. And so it can be nice in a breath of fresh air to just draw that however it is. Um, we can do a lot of family therapy as well. This activity here is showing the landscape of the family, how it feels, how everyone's connected to each other. Um, Sometimes it's just going through photos and memory book, especially with an older population. You know, you can keep photos and look back at good times. Just collecting the photos can be a really nice opportunity. You can make your own book. This one's printed from Facebook, but actually no, it's printed from Google Photos. But um, we do a lot of paper making, again, with trauma, getting your hands down to get out of your head. You can make your own paper. Um, Sometimes out of things that really are important to you, or maybe that you foraged it while you were walking out in nature. You can use leaves and whatnot. Um, so you can book bind your own book, which is really cool. Um, you can do other things. This is a stuffed animal from my childhood. We used her for um, another projection art therapy technique, like I was saying about the sand tray. Um, it's not you doing something, it's them. And we were looking at, I was looking at, I don't think it was the abandoned object activity. I think it was something from your childhood. And you project on it. Well, let's draw her. If she could do anything, what would she want to do? And so I drew here, her and some of the other people in my group. They wanted to travel and they wanted to see the world. And so we drew sort of a um, Aladdin moment on the magic carpet that, you know, while we're here at school, they can go travel the world. I also did some work with dreams and I drew some of the scenes, but I drew something, a picture from the dream itself. And then I rewrote the story of it. I didn't quite change the ending, but I talked about it in a magical way that was less scary. And then I illustrated some key moments 
from that story. And that helped me understand some of the feelings and the techniques. And I also did, um, I think it's dream collage, which is again, collage, whatever stands out. And um, it creates a new image. You can see how they're connected to each other. It's something where you have like no control over because what you find is what you find. So those are just, oh, I have one more. Again, this is something you don't have to be an artist for. This is like a sticker mosaic book. And so it has all the stickers, <clears throat> excuse me, for a different picture. And you have to follow the numbers and put them away. So this is, this costs $3. Um, I like to get face paint also from the dollar store. That's where that is from. And you can just put things where they belong. And when, you know, you are in a very chaotic situation, um, again, people, children who are hospitalized, it can be really relaxing to just finally put everything away where it belongs. You don't have to think about problems. You don't have to think about anyone or try and be anyone or try and make an amazing piece. It's just the calming act of making the scene piece by piece. You can put some music on. Music definitely has a role in art therapy because the type of music you put on is what emotions you're coming up with. And then that informs what you're then probably going to draw. Um, there's a lot of different things that will inform how you draw something or make something. Um, like pencils, the gray pencils are very rigid. It would be a very, <clears throat> excuse me again, intellectual way of thinking about the prompt and it would be a very more straightforward answer but if you were to give them watercolors that's just a real conduct to get a lot of emotions out so they're not going to think literally it's going to be more so how do I feel about this situation or this person um so there's a lot to art therapy it's not just you know drawing your feelings I personally am very bad at drawing my feelings um but it's just, it's how we naturally think in pictures. And art in and of itself is calming. That's why there's so many coloring books and adult coloring books. Just take a moment to yourself. It can be a great way to communicate with other people. It can be a safe way to explore a relationship between people. It can be really fun, like painting you know, this elephant or the sugar skulls, it's always a popular activity on colleges, uh, well, at least where I'm from, um, to try and draw those things. Oh, I have the letter one here. You can write a letter to someone that you'll never send. Get your feelings out that way. Maybe make a postcard of a place you wish you could show them. Um, or again, in like the more elderly population, if they um, starting to lose their memories, they can draw down some of these memories so they can always keep them. There's a lot that you can do. Um, there's a lot of people it works with. It really will work with anyone, artist or not. So in my forthcoming videos, I will try and show you some of those different activities. Uh, we can look at self-care. We can look at um, you can get out some more anger issues or what we feel sad about or um, some guided imagery, some of that more projection that we we're talking about. I might bring in some music therapy or some drama therapy because that's more where my background is in. But yeah, I can't wait to explore art therapy with you. Thank you for joining me. Have a good one. Bye-bye.